Hello everyone, Reflected here, and today we're going to fly through mission 11 of my upcoming Huey campaign called Paradise Lost. This is a fictional campaign set in 1968-69. Uh, it's a fictional conflict uh, taking place on the island of Guam. So according to the story, after a Chinese-backed communist coup uh, in the Philippines, they started a hostile expansion. They invaded Indonesia and then eventually the southern half of Guam. The northern half of Guam is still in American hands. And this war is a lot like the Vietnam War. So instead of the VC, you have FC, Filipino communists, waging the same kind of war that the, the VC did in Vietnam. Uh, this was one of my options to create a Vietnam War-like campaign. The other, the other option would have been to call Guam Vietnam, but uh, it's just a small island that would be an immersion breaker. So I thought it's best if I come up with a fictional scenario, but it feels the same. The vibe, the atmosphere is the same. I made sure of that. So, today we're going to fly a secret mission. But I have a hunch what it's all about based on the picture. We have the briefing here. We are number one. Our name is Jack Wilson. Our co-pilot is Joker. We're Gambler 2-4 and our Wingman is Chuck and Pearson in 3-2, Gambler 3-2. Uh, mission classified. Okay, let's roll. Let's do it. Sir, start up. You've got a secret mission. Get her boy and contact Nikki 9 on the Fox Mike. A secret mission? Wow. I have a hunch what it's all about. Okay, let's start up the aircraft. Hmm, AC phase, USS bus, main generator on, battery on. Shut up. Close the doors. Turn these on. On. Throttle to idle, and then just below the detent. Okay. Clear. Okay, the rotor starts moving. Let's keep an eye on the gas producer. At forty percent, uh, I'm going to release the starter switch. Oh, I forgot to turn on the fuel. Uh, yeah, sorry. Now it's much better. Forty percent. I release the starter button. Increase the throttle to idle. RPM coming up. Oh, it's really wobbly. Okay, what do we need? Let's turn on the instrument lighting. Lighting. Main inverter, standby generator, radar altimeter on. Let's set it to zero. Altimeter, let's check the kneeboard. So you're getting some checklists with the campaign. Then these are all the radio frequencies that you'll ever need. This is a map of, uh, of Guam. This is the American part, and this is bad guy country uh, south of the red line. Fire support bases, hospital, company HQ, and this is where we are, Anderson Air Force Base. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. QNH is 30.05. decimal zero five. Three zero decimal zero. There we go. Set compass to 
three, three, five, let's say. Turn on the radios. Experiencing occasional FPS drops. That's for Marianne's map uh, for now, but I'm sure this will be fixed eventually. Increase the throttle, and let the RPM come up to flight idle. Okay, set your VHF radio to the gambler's frequency and press spacebar to call ready. The Gamblers, that's B Company of the 4th Aviation Battalion, that's us. Uh, so in a book I read that gunships use the VHF radio and slicks use the UHF. So in order to talk to other gamblers, we need to set the VHF to 1, 2, 4, decimal 5, 1, 2, 4, decimal 5. In this campaign, if you're not on the correct frequency on the correct radio, you won't hear conversations and triggers will not fire. So you want to make sure your radios are set properly. There is a DCS limitation. I can only assign UHF frequencies to Hueys. So even if you're flying gunships, you have to talk to your wingman using the built-in radio menu uh, on the VHF radio, so set this to VHF. But in order to hear mm, all the voiceovers, you'll need uh, the VHF. I mean, yeah, so voiceovers, VHF is strictly correct. Built in comms, UHF, not correct, but DCS limitations. Okay, we are set. One, two, four, decimal five. And we'll have to contact Naked Nine when we're airborne. Naked Nine. Fox mic 40.15, 40.15. Oh, good. Let's press spacebar. This is Chalk 1, who's up? Who's up? Roger, lifted in five seconds. Okay, let's do it. Now, I've also read in a book, you've probably seen that in my other video, uh, that gunships were usually older model Hueys because slicks needed the newer Hueys that could just pull pitch and hover in and out of tight LZs but gunships didn't really have to land in tight LZs so they got the weaker older models so if we pull pitch we're approaching the red line um, but we cannot really lift off maybe just a couple of feet See, I'm almost at the red line. It's getting a light on the skids. We can taxi out, but that's the maximum we've got. Zero feet. Oh, by the way, you don't have to worry about built-in ATC comms in this campaign. You can forget about it. You can use it if you want, but just forget about it. Okay, we turn into the wind. I'm not gonna taxi out to the runway. That's a long way. I'm trying to keep it steady without much success. Get some altitude. Right at the red line, I can't pull more pitch. Okay, we're getting some altitude. And then move the cyclic ever so slightly forward uh, to accelerate and hit translational lift as if we have forward speed the rotor generates more uh, lift because we we leave the uh, the downdraft caused by the rotor behind it's not going to ruin its performance anymore See, I'm not pulling more pitch, I'm just not letting it climb, but still keeping it off the ground. We hit translational lift, we are airborne. Uh, 
press space bar to contact Naked9 on the Fox mic radio. So we already tuned into the frequency 40.15. Let's check again 40.15. See, that's the built in comms. Number two is rejoining. So let's contact Naked9. Naked9, this is Gambler 24. We're we'll waiting instructions over. Someone's texting out for takeoff. There he is. We have to orbit overhead and then settle off. I just love the Marianas map. It looks so beautiful. There's still some performance issues. From time to time, I lose uh, FPS. It drops for five to ten seconds, then it gets back to normal. But yeah, it's still quite early access, so I'm sure they're gonna fix that. Like they fixed the channel map too. And there he is, taxiing out. I wish I could have used uh, C-130 for this or some other kind of aircraft, but I couldn't. You will see why I'm not like gonna. Uh, spoil the surprise. Still orbiting. Keep an eye on Naked Nine. Naked Nine, Air One. Okay, coming. Roger, rejoining. Oh, there he is. There's some phantoms parked down here. Let's try and use the trim to make it more comfortable for me. Let's not lose Naked Nine. He's making a right turn. So if I want to call my wingman now to rejoin, I have to be here on the UHF. That's DCS limitations. Flight rejoin. There he is. Trying to get some altitude. Catch up. We're quite heavy, we're carrying rockets and miniguns, full load of fuel, and a weaker engine. Beautiful little cookie cutter houses there. I would sure love to live there. Okay, listen up, we've got a job to do. A concentration of enemy troops has been reported in the woods southwest of Yona. We're gonna spray the jungle with some Asian orange. I need you guys to provide cover. Over. Roger that, we're right behind you. Agent Orange? Yeah, that plane is loaded to the gills with an herbicide called Asian Orange. It kills every plant it touches. We're going to undress the jungle so Charlie doesn't have a place to hide. Great. Is it going to kill Charlie too? No, it's completely harmless for humans and animals. It only kills plants. At least that's what the government says. I'm sure we can trust that. Oh, well, if the government says so, they'd never lie to us. <laughs> so, Naked Nine is going to spray the jungle with Agent Orange. Uh, in real life, the pilots were told that it's completely harmless for humans and animals. It only harms plants, but that was major bullshit. And crews got in, in contact with this, uh, with this agent, this herbicide, and later in life they suffered terrible uh, health consequences, not to mention those on the ground. Adults, kids, uh, it had some terrible effects.
but the official word is that it's harmless for humans. So we're gonna calmly fly in formation with Naked Nine. We're catching up slowly. I don't wanna redline the ship. So we have to go and find Yona. Actually, he's gonna find Yona, but when we navigate, uh, for this campaign, I thought everybody should just man up and exercise some basic airmanship navigation. It's a small island, it's really hard to get lost. So, on the F-10 map, let me pause it for a second. See, there are no icons. You have no idea where you are. So you look out of the window, identify some landmarks, and check the map, and, and you can use some dead reckoning uh, to guess where you are. I left some markers here, like over here. You click on it, Guam Memorial Hospital, Fire Support Base Dublin, Fire Support Base Berlin. So these are going to help you with uh, things that are that I put there, or not on, on, on the map by default. Okay, let's go. So, Yona, uh, yeah, Yona's right here. So there's a big bay, it's on the east shore. There's a golf course to the west. We're gonna recognize it. You can probably see the big bay already. So yeah, where's the fun in checking the F-10 map and seeing your icon? That's just not realistic. Not in 1969 anyway. Catching up, getting into formation. It's not easy to fly in formation with a helo. Uh, to go faster, you need to push the cyclic forward, which is a bit unlike X Wing aircraft. So the old reflexes. They don't really work now. Okay, we are settled. There's the international airport right there that is out of use because it's too close uh, to the front line. There's that big bay that is... Yeah, two mics out, descending to 500 feet. Yeah, the big bay, and behind that, that's Yona, I think. Roger. So we're gonna descend. Whoa. Getting a bit too fast. the way the AI changes altitude that's not very smooth so you have to be alert and have a good touch on the controls to keep up which I do not have you will say though so we gotta catch up with him again oh look at those palm trees I love them so that is Yona I think And we're arriving over the AO. I 
Attenzione. In. Roger, we'll follow you from a safe distance. Watch if you receive hostile fire, just call out the location. Over. Oh, there's the agent orange. Turn on the sight and get ready for action. And let's stay information. Uh, it says in the briefing, but I just want to emphasize that in this campaign, you don't have to touch the ROE of the gunners. So, uh, what's the key combo again? Yeah. They are set automatically by the mission, so you don't touch the gunner's ROE. Now they are set to return fire. You may, however, change the ROE of the co-pilot, because he can use the miniguns. If you want, you can fire the miniguns. If not, you can set him to uh, free fire and just fly toward the target and let him aim. It's up to you. But the gunners are handled automatically. Turning back. Let's try and not to lose too much speed. It's quite hard because we are so heavy. book about uh, flying helicopters in Vietnam. It's called uh, Guts and Gunships. It was written by Mark Garrison. And as far as I know, uh, in later life he got lots of health issues because of Agent Orange. Far no hostile activity. Oh, getting into the spray again. Receiving fire, receiving fire. Uh oh. Can you see him? I think it's coming from that house in the woods by the river, just by that long clearing. Roger, attacking. Okay. I know where it is because I designed the mission, but if you don't know, house by the river, long clearing over there. If you don't know, you can just watch where your gunner is firing at or flight engage. I think There's a small group of houses about 100 yards east of the river between the clearing and a single house. Oh fuck, we're receiving fire. Roger, I can see the muzzle flashes. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, let's set up for a run. Rockets on. Number two is going in too. Try and get some altitude and energy. There's our number two. Okay, get some speed. Rockets away. And 
let's break. Whoa, that was close. Let's set up for another run. And this time, I'm gonna switch to the miniguns and let the co-pilot fire. Fly straight at the target. And the co-pilot will hopefully hit something. Yeah, do it. Come on, come on. Keep it coming. Yeah. Whoa. Always break before uh, reaching the target, reaching the enemy. Because if you break over the enemy, you're an easy target. Fly away, get some altitude. Now let's tell the co pilot hold. I oh, know, let him fire. Oh, the door gunner is also taking care of the problem. Running in. Come on, fire, fire. Ah, we're taking fire. It's about damn time. Fire a few rounds. Now the co pilot to hold. It's running from a different angle now. Pray and pray. Whoa. I have a feeling that uh, these miniguns in DCS, they're not efficient enough against infantry units. For some reason, I don't know, they have a small hitbox or something like that but nobody should have survived that okay let the co-pilot do the aiming now another racetrack pattern Okay, get ready, Joker. We're done here. Thanks for the support. We were receiving AK hits. I sure as hell wouldn't want to do your job. Hey, somebody's got to do it. If you guys need any fire support, give us a call. We're in the yellow pages, over. You guys are crazy bastards. Take care, gentlemen. Okay, Naked Nine is done. Flight rejoin. Flight, join up. And we can go home. Just like in real life, in this campaign as well, you either fly at treat up level or above 1500 feet. Anything in between is kind of suicide. 
I placed a couple of uh, infantry units or even machine guns all over the map so uh, you can be fired upon anywhere anytime just like in real life so you want to be low and fast or high enough in order not to present a, an easy target Mayday, 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 this is Blackjack 3 on guard, we're losing engine power I'm setting down the clearing two clicks west of Firebase Berlin, over Shit Blackjack 6 to 3, we're zero 05 mics out, we're on our way Firebase Berlin Shit, that's Mac, they're in trouble 32.8 Two clicks west of Berlin, they're not too far Okay, let's go and see if we can help 32.8 Berlin. Two clicks west. Okay, let's use the FM homing to find Firebase Berlin. If it still works, because we got a lot of hits. Yeah, it works. And we're flying west northwest. So as soon as we reach Firebase Berlin, we turn slightly to the left. Uh, this is Blackjack 3, we're down safe. We can see movement in the woods to the west of us. We're going to destroy the radio equipment, over. Uh-oh. Hang in there, Matt, we're coming. Flying fast. Get there in time. Firebase Berlin should be somewhere. Oh, there. See, they have those big artillery guns. Some movement down there. Press spacebar when you have visual on the crashed Huey. So from here, you fly to the west. Two clicks should be just beyond this uh, mountain ridge. Let's look at the clearings. Place the Huey, but I don't remember where. Oh, there. There they are. Huey and some crew. There they are. Uh oh. There are muzzle flashes all over the tree line. They're pinned down by the FC. Let's go park their here. Engage. Mission and rejoin. In. I think we still got a couple of rockets left. Don't rejoin. Flight engage ground targets. some altitude. The best tactic is to set up a racetrack pattern. You gain altitude on the downwind lag and you go in fast. Oh, there he is. We're gonna cover his brake. Dude, break. There you go. Yeah, me too. 
Okay, so Blackjack 6 is coming. Get Deuce hit. That's a problem. Let me set the co-pilot to free fire. You can aim better with, uh, with the flexible gun sight. Gain some altitude. Whoa, so we we're waiting for Blackjack 6 to go pick up Ma uh, Mac and the crew. And we have to keep Charlie at bay. Oh shit, where were they? These clearings, they look alike. All look the same, but my co pilot will see it for sure. Oh, there. The Blackjack 6 is landing there, taking fire. There's the crash Huey. That motherfuckers. Whoa, mountain side. Let's pull up around the pass. Oh, not smooth. Okay, the left hand gunner is out of ammo. It's not good. Don't have enough altitude now. Great. Leg jack six is taking off. And they're dead. This is Black Jack Six. All safely on board. We're on TV. Whew. Spacebar to contact Guam Memorial Hospital on the Fox Mic Radio. Guam Memorial, that's 440. We can use the FM homing again. Guam Memorial, this is Gambler 24 with two mics from your position with a wounded man on board. That's not good. So we can either return to base and uh, let them take care of our door gunner there, or we can land at the hospital anyway. Let's use the F10 menu. Uh, I'm gonna land at the hospital anyway. This is 2-4. I'm declaring an emergency. Get a stretcher ready in the parking lot. That's right. And I'm gonna fly low and fast. No time to climb. Let's pause for a second. Check the map. This is Guam Memorial, so it's just north of the International Airport uh, on this little peninsula.
switch this to I. Get more accuracy. And see, there's the bay, and behind that, a little peninsula, and there's the international airport. can't really go faster because our hue is heavy. That's all we got. There's the airport, there's the bay, and the hospital should be behind those big white buildings. Church here. Here on the water. It's just beautiful. Shipping traffic. Trying to get there before he bleeds out. So, those big buildings, this is not the hospital yet, it should be just behind. By the way, it's it's the actual hospital of Guam. I looked it up on Google and Google Maps. Found it in BCS, so I'm using the same building over there. That's the hospital. It starts slowing down a little bit. And there's the helipad. It's busy. There's a Huey right there, but we don't care. Slow down, set her down in the parking lot. It's not going to be easy considering how heavy we are. set up these little timers for when troops are being loaded or unloaded or cargo and some sound effects. Okay, we're clear. Let's go home. Whew. How do we take off from here? We can't do a running takeoff. That's for sure. It's a Dust off, medivac, Huey. Yeah, we burnt enough fuel so that we could make it. Now let's go home to Anderson. By the way, um, flying helicopters in the 60s or in the 60s settings is always more fun when listening to Creedence Clearwater Revival or the Rolling Stones 
but of course in this video I can't do that because YouTube will will not like it. And I couldn't use this in the campaign either. But let's check the board. Armed Forces Radio 117.2. So if you tune in, use your nav radio so that you don't miss any triggers by not being on the right frequency. 117.2. I said two. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably shot away. Or it's not turned on. So I found some uh, royalty free uh, 60s like music on the radio, and I put together on the radio on, on the internet. So I put together a radio program of a couple of instrumental songs. So you can either listen to that, or, or I put together a Spotify playlist with actual 60s, late 60s and early 70s songs. Um, the way I play these missions is I just start Spotify in the background, start the playlist, put it on random shuffle, and, and just enjoy. It's a lot more fun that way. But in this video, I cannot show you because of copyright reasons. And I'm a bit lost. Where is Anderson? Let's check the map. So from the hospital, I should be flying on a heading of approximately uh, 060. Oh, too far north. Get some altitude so we can find, so we can, can see further away. It's not smart to fly at 500 feet anyway. That's how Marty's been hit. Ah, oh, there's Anderson. Okay, here we are, Anderson Air, for Air Force Base. Now you can either use the built-in ATC comms, you have Anderson here, VHF, UHF, or Fox Mike, but you don't have to. We're not gonna land on the runway anyway. If there is a longer uh, leg that you have to travel and fly, like back to base, I highly recommend you use time acceleration. It helps a lot. Like when some people complain that my World War II missions are too long because you have to fly across the channel, well, duh, you, of course you have to fly across the channel, and it takes a long time. It takes a long time, but uh, it's not likely that something will happen there that you can miss, so. You just crank up the time acceleration and you make it across the channel in two minutes. I'm sure everyone can afford that. Okay, 
slow down. The nose come up a little bit. Control the descent rate with collective. Uh, Buffs are here and beyond. That's where that's where we are. This is the Fourth Aviation Battalion. Always take off and land into the wind. The wind today is coming from zero five seven. Slightly from the right. Okay, slowing down a bit more. Forty knots. We're losing lift, so keep raising the collective. Left pedal now, and we are taxiing. We out of left pedal now. Three feet, some Chinooks. Oh, we got some hits on the chin bubble. Get out of the way. Coming. Pedal turn. Another pedal turn. Whoa, it's getting a bit wobbly. Not a little bit. Okay, we can land here. Set her down. So you want when, when you come to a stop at Anderson for the mission, that's when it's complete. But you can also use the F10 radio menu and use the skip mission function. Bottle back. Turn up all the stuff and then the engine. You can hear they're listening to the radio on the loudspeakers. Let's turn everything off. Battery generator. And that was an infantry unit walking through the Huey. Somehow they cannot go around it. AI. Whew, that was exhausting. <laughs> so thank you for watching. This was, I hope this gave you a little taste of what my campaign is gonna be like. You're gonna fly gunships uh, in the last six missions. In the first six missions, you're gonna fly slicks like that one over there. So more like carrying cargo and troops. And then you transfer to B Company and fly gunships. It's gonna be a lot of fun. 
wide variety of all kinds of missions that were flown in real life as well. So I hope you had fun and stay tuned. See ya.